Welcome back, best ever listeners, to another episode of Passive Investor Tips. I'm your host, Travis Watts. In today's episode, what we're talking about is how single family differs from commercial real estate and a few pros and cons. Disclaimers, as always, never financial advice, not telling you or anyone what to do with your money. Please seek licensed financial advice when it comes to your own investing. And with that top of mind, you know, there's a big misconception out there in the media and the industry at large that real estate is just one big singular asset class, and it couldn't be further from the truth. You'll hear people say, I have X amount of my portfolio in stocks and X amount in real estate, but what does that even mean? <laughs> so I spent six and a half years investing in single family residential real estate. I used uh, lots of different business models during that time frame. And for the last eight or nine years, I've been a full-time investor in commercial real estate. So what I figured I'd do in this episode is just quickly break down some of the similarities, some of the differences, some of the pros, some of the cons, and some of the risks. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into a few of the similarities between single family and commercial. Number one, single family homes and commercial multifamily specifically are both real estate at the end of the day. They are tangible assets. They are assets that you can touch, feel, and see. They serve a basic human need, which is the need for shelter. Number two, both of these investments are in fact or can be investments that produce cash flow, passive income, potential equity, upside, and tax advantages. Number three, it is common in both single family and commercial real estate to use debt or to have a mortgage, which debatably is one of the greatest advantages to investing in real estate as leverage can help boost returns. But just to caution you, it can of course entail risk and it can work against you if you have uh, the inaccurate debt structuring on a deal or if you over leverage a property. Now let's examine three differentiators between the two. And number one is that commercial real estate doesn't have to entail residential, as I just used in my previous example. You have a lot of different asset types within commercial real estate that you can invest in. That could include self-storage, mobile home parks, hospitality, raw land, multifamily, car washes, shopping centers, and so on. Number two, the debt structure is a lot different in commercial compared to single family. In commercial, it's quite common to see five to seven year debt terms, maybe a period of interest only payments, whereas with single family, it's often a 15 or a 30 year fixed rate mortgage on those deals. Number three is how each of these asset types are valued. See, in the commercial space, your valuation primarily is driven by how much income the property produces. Whereas with single family homes, it's derived from comps or comparable sales in the local area of like kind properties. So let's examine three quick pros to commercial real estate. And number one is if you're investing in commercial real estate through a syndication or a private placement, this can be a very hands-off approach. A syndication is where limited partner investors pool their money together to invest and buy larger uh, projects, where the general partner or the general partnership is executing the business plan on your behalf. With single family homes, you're either self-managing or you're outsourcing the management to a property management company. But even if you choose the latter of those two options, you still have a lot of decisions to make. What property to buy, how you're gonna conduct your underwriting and your due diligence, who your renters are gonna be, what kind of rent you're gonna charge, if you're gonna paint the property, if so, what color, and then what contractors are you gonna use and what are you willing to pay for it? There's a lot of active decisions that are still involved even if you're not doing the day-to-day -day management making it a more active venture compared to syndications. Number two, commercial real estate, especially true in multifamily apartments, offers a lot of economies of scale. Think about renovating a 400 unit apartment building and you need 400 refrigerators and 400 smoke detectors and 400 toilets. 
Well, you better bet there's gonna be some great discounts that you can get by buying in such bulk as compared to running out to Home Depot or Lowe's and getting one item for one property at a time. Number three is again about the debt structuring. So right now there is a opportunity more so debatably in the commercial sector compared to the single family home sector. This has everything to do with debt and interest rates. So as the Fed has aggressively hiked rates from 22 to 2023, it has put downward pressure on pricing. So a lot of the deals that we're seeing right now are being traded at roughly 20 to 25% discounts relative to previous pricing. We really haven't seen this kind of discounting in most markets across America in the single family home space. So that is your opportunity this year and moving into next. Now let's transition to three pros of single family real estate investing. And the first one arguably would be control. You have complete control. What property do you wanna buy? Where do you wanna buy it? Again, what renters do you want? What rent do you wanna charge? You have full control over the business plan. Do you wanna flip it? Do you want to end up living in it longer term? There's a lot of flexibility with that. So if you're a very hands-on person that likes full control, it's a definite consideration and a pro. Number two, it's easier to invest locally. So if you happen to live in a market that you really love and enjoy, maybe you grew up there, or maybe it's just one of the hot markets across America right now, it's pretty easy just to go out and shop the marketplace and buy some single family rentals that might be within a 20 mile radius from your own home so that you can have better oversight on these deals. You can drive by them. And if you self-manage, that could definitely be a pro. Number three, Single family real estate can be a great hands-on learning experience. In fact, in, in my own experience, I'm very grateful to have learned the fundamentals of investing in real estate by starting this way. Now, from that point, people usually graduate to either doing active large commercial deals or syndicating as a general partner, or they end up becoming a limited partner, which is what I chose to do, and becoming more of a hands-off investor. And to my surprise, working in investor relations and investor education and development for years now, I've come to find that most limited partners are not actually real estate people by trade. They're medical professionals, they're business owners, they're entrepreneurs, they're high net worth, high income folks that are working in different fields doing their highest and best and a syndication is simply a diversification tool for their investment portfolio. And as for the risks, I think risk profiles are a very interesting conversation because to me, the number one risk in investing in real estate comes down to track record and experience. So if you're doing single family homes, I'm talking about you. What is your skill set? What is your track record? What is your upper hand advantage that's going to allow you to compete with competitors in the marketplace? Now, if you're investing in a syndication, the same is true for the general partner or the general partnership. What is their skill set, track record, and what connections do they have that's gonna give them an upper hand advantage? Additionally, it's worth noting that there's a lot of risks that are largely out of our control. Things like political risk and climate risk and natural disaster risk and tenant risk, population risk and interest rate risk and so on. So in recap, it really just depends on how conservative you are or the group that you're working with is when it comes to underwriting and finding acquisitions. Your risk tolerance also matters a lot. Experience and skill set are always going to be very important factors if you're going to be active in this business. As to which investment type is best, that's obviously debatable, but I myself and hundreds of thousands of other people have been profitable in both ventures. And I can tell you, as much as I am grateful to have learned the fundamentals and to have gone through the process in single family homes, the reason that I stick with commercial real estate and intend to long term and not return back to single family is simply for the hands off approach. I find it much more scalable and simple to invest in dozens of limited partnership investments or syndications as compared to managing dozens of single family homes. 
I also really value diversification. So years ago, I got very uncomfortable with having all of my portfolio tied up in a 20 mile radius out in Colorado when I had single family homes. And I didn't wanna make that four or five times bigger as the years went on. So I find a lot of peace of mind having investments spread across the entire United States in different asset types in different geographic regions that helps to deliver on my diversification goals. So what about you? What are your goals? What's your skill set and what's your desired outcome? There's something to think about for the week. You're listening to the Passive Investor Tips right here at Best Ever. I'm your host, Travis Watts. Please like, share, and subscribe. Share these episodes with anyone you think could find value, helps the algorithm, helps the channel, and helps videos like this reach more investors like you. Until the next episode, have a best ever week, everyone. We'll talk to you very soon.